Okay, we should be live, I think. Video okay, audio okay, hair okay. I need my glasses, definitely need my glasses. How's everyone doing this evening? Or this afternoon? Or this morning? Wherever you are. We have our awesome moderator, 3D Printed Aspie. Ryan, thank you very much for, co for uh, coming by, man. Gentleman Scoundrel, Victor Shikluna. Aaron York, hello. You don't have a Mark III yet. No, unfortunately I don't. And there is a very, very valid reason why I don't have, or anyone has, a Mark III yet. John Jimenez, Rob. Huib, Mark, Mad One UK, Elliot, another Mark, <laughs> Simone. <laughs> I'm not sure about your hair. Yeah, I used a, a bit less gel than I usually do. <laughs> so yes, I have the pulse. It's it's printing. I uh, I opened it up yesterday evening, and I'm just. Playing around with it. I have lots to talk about today. Lots and lots. I will explain all of these. I'll talk about this. I'll talk about TCT. And most importantly, we're going to talk about the Prusa i3 Mark III. That's going to be a mouthful. <laughs> oh, thanks, Jean-Michel. Thank you very much. I love you too, guys. <laughs> 3D Extruded, Mr. Fibble. So, give it four more minutes before I start talking about my awesome adventure in Prague last weekend. Hey, every Joe. 3D Kid, hi. Manu Bows. So, yes, today was a very, very, very big day in the 3D printing world. <laughs> After a lot of speculation, a lot of hints and, and teasing, the, the, the Prusa i3 Mark III is finally out, finally. And, and I say finally, not just because it's finally out, but because you guys have no idea how hard it is to keep stuff secret. <laughs> I am, I am very, very happy, very happy today. So yes, um, the Prusa i3 Mark III. Um, so last weekend I was in Prague and I was there because I was in Germany for, um, for a job. And while I was there, uh, Prusa kind of messaged me and told me like, listen, you're like four hours train ride away from the factory. Why don't you just come by? We have a company event. So I kind of thought, yeah, okay. It's like 50 euros to get a train from Berlin to Prague. Why not? So I did. I got a ticket and I went to Prague. I uh, arrived there at about 9.30 in the evening. Was greeted by Joe himself outside the factory. And um, yeah, he showed me around the factory. He showed me the awesome 3D printing farm that they have. All the QA parts of the factory, all the technical parts or the engineering stuff, the assembly lines, the way they work, it's clockwork. I, I was absolutely in love. My OCD was extremely happy in that factory. I was in Berlin. I'll be there again in in about a week and a half. Hey Joe, now I have to replace my CR10 with Mark III. Just has all the things I wanted to upgrade. Just keep both. <laughs> so, the i3 Mark III. Um, it's, I, I had, the awesome, awesome pleasure of actually seeing it live in person about a week ago at the Prusa factory. Um, I have known about it for quite a while now. Um, I can actually specify exactly the moment I found out about it. 
because it was during a live stream. When I was assembling the TiVo Little Monster, I got a text from Pusha. And if any of you guys were there, you kind of saw me smiling, looking at my phone and saying, I'm sorry, guys, but this is a bit important. That was uh, Yosef sending me photos <laughs> of the Mark III. So, uh, yeah, so I was, I was absolutely, absolutely amazed. Um, the first thing I noticed was obviously the frame, the 2020 Y frame, which makes it so, so, so much more stable. Now, the upgrades, what does it have more than the Prusa i3 Mark II S? So, it has, oh God, where do I start? So, they're switching to a 24 volt system rather than the 12. It will have a power off or a power out resume function. You can actually also save the print and then resume it once you switch on. It has a filament laser sensor. Now, what, does, what the sensor does is basically it knows that there's filament moving and at what speed it's moving. So basically, if your filament gets jammed in the nozzle, um, it instantly stops the print. So basically, you won't ruin the print. If you insert the filament, it knows that you're inserting filament, so it continues to move it down until it starts extruding, so it's like an auto-load filament function. It has trinamic um, stepper drivers, which are extremely silent. I've seen this thing, so those of you who have a Mark, III, a Mark II know that quiet mode or silent mode is actually very silent. Now imagine high-powered mode being more silent than that. That's how quiet this printer is going to be. It has, it has, a, you can integrate Octoprint, and the way it's integrated is they develop this INZ Ramble board. INZ stands for Einstein, <laughs> which takes sort of like an integrated Octo, Octoprint board in it, and it just stays in its enclosure. It has, um, oh God, so many things, so many, so many things. It has the removable flexible uh, build plate, which is powder coated. And the powder coating itself has PEI um, dust in it, which make it stick extremely well. Price will be about $50 more or $60 more, something like that, than the current Mark II or the previous smart tool, so it's about $760. It also has uh, Noctua fans, so it's extremely silent. It also has Bontec extruder, so it grabs filament with two teeth rather than just the wheel and the teeth of the extruder. Um, what else, what else, what else, what else? Oh god, <laughs> I'm getting mixed up, so many things. Oh yes, and it also has a system where if there's a layer shift or the, the extruder like skips a layer or stuff like that, it actually senses the voltage variation in the stepper motor. So it actually knows, so it stops a print in order for you not to ruin that print. It also has um, fan sensor so it knows the speed that the fans are going at so if the fan slows down or stops working it knows and it stops stops the print um what else what else okay uh, another thing i need to also to mention in very very important is that when the electricity goes out or when you stop the print or when you pause it or it jams or the fan stops it doesn't just stop printing, it lifts about two millimeters just so it, the, the extrusion doesn't just ruin the print, which is absolutely awesome. So, catching up with the chat again. Sorry, I went way, I, I haven't stopped talking. <laughs> Also, yeah, I forgot to mention, um, it has no limit switches on the X and Y, which is awesome. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't make much, but it's, it's cool. It's absolutely cool. The way it works, everything. I've seen the print quality. The print quality is amazing as 
any other Prusa i3 Mark II S. Um, it's just much smoother. The display is the standard display short to ground. It's the same display as we always have, as we always have had. So another reason why I actually don't have a machine right here, because currently in the world, there are about maybe two or four machines in total um, that are fully working and fully assembled. And two of those are at the New York Maker Fair, which I so wish I was there right now. Um, but they will be at TCT and I will be at TCT and yeah, all will be right in the world. The other two were sent out to um, magazines for review, basically. The new version is so quiet because of the Trinamic stepper drivers. They just, they have 256 uh, micro stepping drivers. Um, so it makes it seriously, seriously smooth and quiet. Uh, short to ground, it will have an Octopi, uh, Octoprint integration. Actually, you know what? I can possibly show you. Um, I should have some tweets to show you. <laughs> I want to try not to show you too much because they are Prusha's tweets to me or messages. Um, but now that it's out, I can show you most of them. So let me find. Hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Almost there. There it is. So let me see exactly. Okay, so let me do this transition. Okay, so that is one of the first iterations of the Mark III. Now it's not exactly exactly like that. Now quite, just a few things have changed, but pretty much it's there. What I noticed is that when I was there. The power supply was also powder coated black, which looked really sleek. Will the design of the Mark III still be open source? Absolutely. Brian Hurwitz, what can you print at 100 millimeters a second at the moment? Well, this is at 90 millimeters a second, but I'll get to those in a bit. But yes, it's, it prints very fast and it's still very quiet. So that is the machine. That is the machine itself. Um, as you can see, it's, it's a, a slightly different frame because it has different perforations on how it's assembled. You have the 2020 extruded aluminum, which is on the base. The Pinda probe, another thing, the Pinda probe has another heater sensor inside because they found out that when you, um, when you take bed leveling at certain heat temperatures, the Pinda probe triggers at different levels. So they inserted sort of like a thermistor in there to uh, compensate for that. So let me just do that there. Now, there will be an upgrade, sort of like a halfway upgrade, which is the Mark 2.5, it's going to be called. And the reason why they couldn't do a full upgrade kit uh, from a Mark 2S to a Mark 3 is because too many things would change. In fact, so many things would change that you pretty much need to rebuild the whole printer from scratch. You have different power supply. Um, you have a different frame, the, uh, the, the metal sheet on the, uh, on the gantry would be completely different. 
So yeah, th that is why they cannot do a full upgrade kit. But they are going to do a Mark 2.5, which is going to be about $180, I think. And that will give you the removable flex build plates. It will give you the, um, the Bontech extruder with the Pinda probe, um, the filament sensor, I think a couple small other stuff. Is there a texture on the spring plate? Yes, it is. Um, there is. It's actually the powder coating itself. Um, it's, um, it's apart from powder coating, it's also granulated PEI. And it's also magnetic. I mean, really strong magnet. So, Octoprint integration. Let me see if I can find the other photo that I got from uh, Prusa. So, that goes there. There. See, that is the INZ Rambo board. Um, once again, INZ being short for Einstein. <laughs> and that is the board with the integrated um, Octoprint circuitry. Doesn't sound like he'll be able to refinish those plates. Any idea how much a new one would cost? Which plates? Exactly. Uh, as Tomash said, the new power supply will not have a 110 or 220 volt switch. It will be automatic detection of voltage. Do you know if there are any new print temp restrictions on the new bed? Not that I'm aware of. So, Frederick, um, it, it's so hard. The new, since it's powder coated, it is extremely, extremely strong. And even if the nozzle digs into the plate, there is more of a chance of you damaging the nozzle than you are damaging the plate because it is so tough. Keep in mind that powder coating is used in industrial things it's because it, it is so strong. It is cured, hardened, um, powdered paint, magnetic powder paint, basically. Um, if I'm not wrong, I think I think, I think the, um, the front part, no, I think it's all metal. I'm not entirely sure there's actually any acrylic. Um, if there is, it's the back plate of the screen. The new build, the new bed plate will work with any material. Also, if you don't want the magnetic removable build plate, plate <laughs> you can actually remove it and then stick on any type of build surface you want. You can install build tag, you can install PEI on it, you can pretty much install any kind of surface. You can just use glue and then just put the magnetic build plate on when you want to print something without what you've just stuck on the build plate. Will the kit be easier to assemble with the new frame instead of the old threaded rods? It probably will be, um, because there is no fine-tuned adjustments to get the skewed axes um, in order. Because ultimately it's just the extruded aluminum frame. Hey Florian! So yes, so this should start shipping around November, I think. Would there be any benefit to upgrading the Mark 2.5 if you have multi-material? And not your fan would not be used, if I understand. Exactly. You, if you have the multi-material, um, you 
probably wouldn't be able to do much with the 2.5, except for maybe the build plate, the removable, flexible build plate. So are the Prinda sensor spots on the piece under the magnetic sheet? The Pinda sensor detects the metal, um, which is why the, uh, the Mark 42 is actually fiberglass, but it had points in it which react to the Pinda sensor. But now that it's all metal, um, it detects it anywhere. Does it do the same alignment probing as the Mark IIs? Yes, it does. Um, actually, it's, it, it works in a very particular way because when it does the probing, it always uses high power mode. And then if you wanted to print in silent mode, it switches over. But as I said, high power mode is extremely quiet. It's really, really quiet. I also have to point out though, gonna, as a side note, this thing is actually very quiet. It's printing it, and it's probably the quietest printer I have here, um, which is why I'm staying so close to see that you can still hear me while it's printing. Will the Mark III have multi-material upgrade option? I'm quite sure it will. Is the print area any larger than the Mark II? If not, why do you think they haven't increased the size, especially as the CR10 is larger for less dollars? So, um, the only size difference is you'll have about 10 millimeters more in the Z height. And the reason why they didn't go bigger is because it's a Prusa style printer. And Prusa style printers are pretty much that volume. Also, keeping in that size, keep in mind that the CR10, yes, it's, it's cheaper and it has a bigger build area. But I, I honestly believe, and I'm, I'm fairly certain um, I'm going to get this right, that this race to the bottom of printers uh, with cheap printers that's going to implode very soon and people are going to want more quality rather than paying a smaller price this is the same thing as as mobile phones mobile phones started really large and complicated really expensive and then you know technology got better they got smaller and much cheaper and you got yourself like a $40 phone and now all of a sudden, once again, we broke the $1,000 phone mark with the iPhone X. So I believe that's the way it's going to go with printers as well. People are just going to want more quality, support, and peace of mind. The video of the power powder coated build plate looks rough. It's almost like an 800 or 1000 grit sandpaper if i have to find sort of like a relative thing to it so the octopus so that was the mark three um and this is the matter hackles matter hackers pulse um this arrived yesterday it's a Prusa style 3D printer. Um, it comes pre-assembled from Matter Hackers um, and it comes sort of assembled to order. So you can buy the standard kit, which is, hold on, because I have everything here. So the standard kit is $799. Um, you have the heat bed, you have the auto calibration sensor, which is a BL touch comes fully pre-assembled, um, but then you can add a few upgrades. You can add a Bontech extruder to it. You can add the Olsen Ruby nozzle. You can add the screen. And the one very important thing is that since it's Matter Hackers, it integrates flawlessly with uh, Matter Control, which is the slicer for Matter Hackers. And apart from that, you can also run it of their matter control tablet, which is right here, which is what it's doing right now and makes life much easier. <laughs> and so far I'm loving it. It's extremely quiet. Actually, um, you can probably hear the AC in the background. I'm gonna switch it off for a bit. 
just to give you an idea of how quiet this thing is. Okay, so the AC is off. And now it's kind of printing at high powered mode, which is called stealth mode. It's just quiet. It's like really, really quiet. It comes with like these rubber feet as well. Um, the only thing was that since it came from the US, um, the couriers had a bit of a field day, I think, and I had a few screws which were untightened, so I just had to reset it. But other than that, Prints beautiful. This is this is the full version. It is the standard printer with the screen, with the Olsen Ruby nozzle, and also the Bontek, which in total would come to $1,229. Exactly, you hear nothing. It's just quiet. Now, you might think it's expensive, and to a certain extent, okay, possibly, yes. However, keep in mind that it already has a $100 BL Touch on it. It already has about $200 Bontech extruder, which is extremely good for flexible filaments, which I'll be testing out, of course. Um, and most importantly, you have Matter Hacker support. And keep in mind that since these are assembled to order, as soon as you tell them what customer, who you are um, and what issues you have, they actually have already all the information on that machine um, all set from their end. You plug it into Matter Hacker's um, um, Matter Control and it recognizes the machine. Your profile is already set for it. So I'm going to switch that back on because I don't want to die of heat. Exactly, you have the BL Touch, which is another $40. You have a Mark 42 bed with the PEI sheet. Um, it, it's I, it also very interesting. This doesn't home like the normal printers, like to the left and to the bottom. It homes to the left and upwards. And the limit switch is actually um, an inductive probe, which is right here. Hi, do you know if the print quality will be improved or the Mark II S? If it is, it'll be very little. Um, it's more functionality and ease of use that they have decided to focus on. So another thing, TCT. So yeah, TCT next week. In the UK, in Birmingham, there is TCT, which is this awesome show about 3D printing. It's like this huge conference with many, many hundreds of companies there. I will be there. Unfortunately, I'm only there on the 27th, which is a Wednesday. And apart from going around from vendor to vendor to see what's happening and take some footage, I will be from 10 o'clock in the morning till 12. I'll be on Hawk 3D Proto stand um, and from 3 p.m. till 5 p.m., I will be at the E3D stand doing a meet and greet. So if you're there, please come by. I'll have stickers. <laughs> yes, and Simone will be there as well. <laughs> I'm finally going to get to meet the rest. I went to the Bay Area Maker Fair and I met most of the YouTubers. Now I'm going to go to TCT and meet the rest. I'll meet Tom. I'll meet Simone. Oh man. <laughs> so, Aaron New York, I hope they fix the heat bed wire melting issue. That will be sorted out because, um, as far as I know, they also have a thermistor inside the Rambo box to see if there is any heat fluctuation in there as well. I will. I'll give Ryan a few stickers. <laughs> Joe, do you know about the most 
printed CNC thing and could it be something you want to make a video about? I'm not sure I've heard about it, to be honest. Tom is a lot shorter than you think he is. Well, we are European, whereas Joel is a lot taller than you might think he is. When you get a moment, can you check in on your page? Remember I left one for some advice on trunks. Absolutely, will do. I'm sorry if I missed it. Did the printer stop? Ooh, yes it did. Uh, so I switched it off by mistake. Yeah, so when I moved it, I switched it off by mistake. <laughs> okay. See, this is why you don't touch things when they're working. <laughs> oh, well. It's so quiet. I, it's true. It really is true. It is so quiet because I. It's not the first time I look at it and think, "Is it still printing?" <laughs> there you go. It appears your last print failed to complete. Would you like to attempt to recover from the last known position? Okay. I definitely would like to recover from the last known position. But this is a coin, it's not the octopus. <laughs> That's not what it was printing. <laughs> Let's cancel that. Tell us the rest of Prusa's secrets that you saw. Ah, uh, see? <laughs> While I do know a couple more, I cannot talk about those. <laughs> Go leave it there for now. Um, also, another thing I want to talk about, um, and that is all these benches and cats and things you see in front of you. And seeing as I have you live, and currently in the chat, there are about 187 viewers. I have a nice pool of viewers. I am thinking of doing um, a new format of printer reviews. So I love printing stuff. When I review things, I print fun stuff, and they're awesome, and I love it, and I know you guys love it. But I want to kind of go a step further because with every review, someone would mention to me, uh, but does it print flexible? But what speed does it print at? Or does it print in that speed? Or how was it with that material? So what I'm doing is I'm going to set a benchmark for every printer. And that is I'm going to print a minimum, minimum of 100 hours on each printer before I do a review on it. And in those 100 hours, I'm gonna be printing a lot of Benchy. So these, what, what I have here, these were printed with the CR10 Mini. These were printed with the CR10 version two. And these were printed with the TiVo Tornado. And these are a Benchy in 100 microns. There's, these are all Benchies in 200 microns. So this one is at 30 millimeters a second. This is at 50 millimeters a second, 70 millimeters a second, and 90 millimeters a second. Those were printed in ColorFab PLA. This was printed with cheap, unbranded Chinese PLA because people ask me, does it print well in unbranded cheap PLA? 
This is just a G code which uh, came pre-sliced on the CR10, so I decided to run it on all three because I'll be comparing a few of them. Um, I'll be printing something in TPU as I have here. Um, I'll also be doing calibration tests, Z resonance to print something tall and thin to, for the whole build height to see how it stands. And then I'll print some nice things. I'll also print an ABS, wood filaments. If it can print in um, abrasive materials like nylon and stuff like that, I will print as well. So, let me redo this. Uh, okay. So what happened was that I ran out of battery. But it's okay. I don't mind. So yeah. I did a questionnaire and if any of you are interested, it's a shame because this was actually coming out quite nice, <laughs> really nice. I love this color. So if any of you have Twitter, I posted a, um, a tweet a couple of days ago because I did a questionnaire. Um, in order to list the 10 things you would like to see on a 3D printer review and then 10 things that you are just not interested in seeing uh, when doing a 3D printer review. Because I want to start doing reviews based on what people want rather than what I like to do. Um, reviews have to be useful. They have to be relevant. And I'm going to start doing them in a way where it is measurable for every single printer where I can score a printer based on obviously my thoughts and no one else's. Um, and yeah, exactly. 3D printed Aspie. It, exactly like the cool wall, uh, cool wall for, uh, from Top Gear. And also kind of like, um, like the lap, the reasonably, reasonably priced car board, but in a scoring way. Joe, how many print hours do you complete each day? All your printers combined. Um, in a day, printers combined, I'd say about 30, 30 to 40 hours a day. Yeah, about 30 hours. Let's say an average of 30 printing hours per day um, throughout all the printers. The only reason why I don't do more is because when I have five or six prints, I've come to the conclusion that six printers running is a good number for me because I can kind of keep an eye on them. Uh, if I do more, then I start panicking. <laughs> Short to ground. Yes, that is the idea. Um, I kind of like want to do a top trumps kind of thing. So what I'm going to be doing is I'll have my own scoring sheets, which once the review is out, I will share with absolutely everyone on how I scored a printer. And it will have, to give you guys an idea, if the build volume is less than 80 by 80, it gets one point. If it's less than 15 by 15, it will get two points. If it's less than 20 by 20, it gets three points. If it's more than 20 by 20, it gets five points. So. You start finding all of these, where the instructions good, were they bad, does it have customer support, um, does it have auto bed leveling, and all these things will start adding points accordingly, and then you come up with a final score, and that translates into a 1 out of 10 kind of score, or maybe 1 out of 20. And then I can score each printer based on the same actual things. Um, or same attributes for any 3D printer. And that, I think, sets a relatively good benchmark. And apart from that, that gives me a very good score of comparing printers. Like, all these printers came to 18 out of 20. So they're in those bracket.
Malta must be willing to give a dedicated electricity power station running all those machines. I just got the electricity bill for the last three months, actually two months, two and a half months. And it is as much as someone, a family of three usually pays for about six months. So when, when you're watching the ads, just think about that for a minute. Just watch a few seconds more of it. <laughs> Aaron, yes, exactly. It's, it's not that I have something sort of set at the moment, but it's, for example, if I use, okay, so let's say I use 1,000, and the score is 852, then I can always say it was 8.52 out of 10. It was just divided by 100. Yes, I have over 150 benches running around. <laughs> when did you start getting into 3D printing? Exactly a year ago, in October last year, I ordered my first 3D printer, which was the Pusha i3 Mark II. Yes, null zero, true, but I will be sectioning off the scores. So... A set of scores will be done on prints, a set of scores will be done on the machine, a set of scores will be done on the company. So just because a machine has bad scores on the company that is producing it, um, it doesn't mean that's going to produce bad prints. Um, and it will be sectioned off whether it's a kit or pre-assembled, they will be different because I want it measurable and also scalable. I want it to work even going forward into the future with new 3D printers. So for example, like the ANET A8, not necessarily a bad printer. It produces some great prints if you fine tune it, but the company behind it, there is no support It's the community. So it would get a bad score, for example, in that aspect or the QA or the safety, but it would get good points on the prints. Ritual, $5. Thank you very much, man. More powerful maker noob. <laughs> I'm going to start investing in generators. So that is switched off. Okay. Any advice for TT83 on stringing? on the little monster. Um, Brian, uh, okay, what little monster? I use about six millimeters of retraction on the little monster in order to avoid stringing. So he can still buy <laughs> Hey, Isaac, how are you doing? Tell your father to buy you a 3D printer. Papatek, good to see how far you have come in one year. I remember your office there when there was just one printer. Amazing how far you have come, and I appreciate it. Thank you very much, Papatek. Uh, yeah, it, um, it really blows my mind that I've come to this point within a year. I would have never, ever, ever imagined to be here within a year. It, it completely blows my mind away. And honestly speaking, it's thanks to you guys. So I... I humbly thank you from the bottom of my heart. Joe, what's that color you love there? Which one? This one? This is the Matter Hackers Neon Yellow Transparent. Um, it, you would ideally have to see it in front of you it has like this really highlighted yellow. It's absolutely awesome. Prusha has 300 plus in his farm power bill. Yes, um, that, that was overwhelming, man. Walking into that room with 255 printers, I think, just in the farm. And then you have all the other printers that are running tests before they're shipped out. 
engineering and testing and new materials and new features. Absolutely mind blowing. Joe, you need solar panels. Yeah, that would be ideal. Unfortunately, I don't have a roof, seeing as I live in an apartment. <laughs> I just become favorite that I can send cheeky comments in the super chat. It's all right, Rachel. I, I, you know what? I appreciate it. What you do right here, man. Thank you very much. What do you think about the Anon Cubic i3 Mega? I think it's an absolutely great printer. Um, I've had lots of fun with it. It's still there. Um, and now Anon Cubic have just sent me the Ultra Base to install and try out, which I'll be doing very shortly. Filamento Vertigo Galaxy PLA. Ooh. I mean, these guys. Yeah. <laughs> let's, let's all bring them out. I'll be posting a video of these very shortly. Um, actually, you know what? Let me see if I can do this so you guys can see. Can you see? Wait, hold on. I don't want to break anything. There. So, let me change this. So yeah, this, uh, there you go, zoom out. There, okay. So, Jamie Sheru is, man, thank you, thank you very much, dude. We thank you from the bottom of our hearts. You are an honest and lovely guy, and that's why you have succeeded. Thank you very much, man. Thank you, I appreciate it. Do you plan to sell t-shirts? Eventually, yes, I will. How is the tornado performing? Actually, quite well, I have to say. Um, Sean Toomey, keep up the good work. Five bucks. Thank you very much, man. Thank you. Thank you so much, dude. Is there something like a temperature test tower for retraction stringing? Uh, I'm up and printing now. And for filigree prints, retraction take the most time. I actually, I did. I did do a retraction test tower. If you find my profile on Thingiverse, there should be something. Joe, are you going to come out with your own filament? If not, pretend you were. What color would it be? What would it look like? So, I've had this conversation um, with a couple of companies because I'd really, really, really like to have my own filament. Um, and if I did have my own filament, it will be red. But it has to be a scarlet red. And I mean like really, really nice scarlet red. It will have flakes and there'll be like a pearl flakes. So it kind of shimmers nicely in the sun. And it's going to have to be called like a Malta red or something like that. So back to these. And the color is really, hold on. Let me see if I can fix the color a bit. Uh -huh. Oh. That's kind of about right. Almost. No. That's almost there. So yeah, this is the Vertigo Gray. Actually, this looks pretty much close to what it looks like in real life. Michael Jezzard wanted to use Vertigo Grey to print at Linda. It hadn't arrived, so I used Iceland Blue. Oh man, I love that color. Very, very bad choice. Great print, but looks awful. Man, I love Iceland Blue. It has nothing to do with Vertigo Grey or Vertigo Galaxy, but Iceland Blue is awesome. Also, thank you very much, man. Thank you. Like Pearl Ruby Red from Filamentum. Yes, similar to that. So this is the Vertigo Galaxy. 
These were all printed on the GTEC Giant Arm D200. And they look absolutely awesome. And unfortunately, this filament, it looks much better in real life than any photos. It was very difficult to take photos of it. This is Vertigo Galaxy on Rapunzel Silver. And this is absolutely awesome. I'm loving this. So, let's go back to that. Oh, well, man. Mark Gibson bought my first 3D printer after a one hour 3 plus review. Never thought it would be so much fun. Now totally addicted. Thank you very much, Mark. And also, happy, happy you were into it, man. Brian Horvitz, 10 bucks, man. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Always great work. Gotta I will not see you at TCTR. That's a shame, man. I am there on Thursday. Would have been great to chat all through things 3D and your new industry. I have just resigned, leaving it after 13 years. Ouch. Yeah, I, I have to say I'm not too excited about finally getting back to a full-time job. I was enjoying this. Um, but for the moment, it just for a little bit longer, it will have to do. But thank you very much, Brian, man. Is there a way to fix Z-Wobble in slicer settings? Um, unfortunately, no. Z-Wobble, as far as I know, it's usually mechanical. So it's either the belts are not tight enough, you have possibly bent screws, or the printer is not aligned properly. That, those are usually the case. Or possibly the um, lead screw nut that pulls it up and down, that could also has, have a bit of wobble inside. You know, you can remove the residue from support with a lighter layer. Um, that for me, Stahl, was not difficult to take photo of the galaxy. Um, well, if you have the right equipment, obviously. <laughs> Black filament is fun to take pics and fly by chromatic glitter in it, and the vertical galaxy is definitely hard for pics. Exactly. It's just getting the right tonality, just the right tonality. What do I think about the TiVo Tarantula? <laughs> oh, the TiVo Tarantula. So, this week I decided to assemble the TiVo Tarantula. Oh man. <laughs> um, I can tell you this, it is not the worst 3D printer kit out there. There are worse than that. There are two worse than that. So, I have yet to play around with it. So far, I've printed a Benchy and it looks horrible because the TiVo Tarantula does not have a hard cooling fan. Um, the instructions, half of the steps were missing. They're just not in the instruction book. There are complete incomplete steps. There are things you have to figure out for yourself because if you, if you follow the TiVo Tarantula instructions to letter the instruction book, you will not have a usable printer because half of the parts will not be installed. I managed to get through because now I know 3D printers. Um, so that needs desperate updating. And to be completely honest, I think the TiVo Tarantula is outdated. Um, I don't think it's the kind of printer that should be sold anymore. Not because it, I, it's a tinkerer's printer. There's a lot that needs to be done to it from a community standpoint. There's, there's too much that is involved in 3D printing to make it better, to install a part cooling fan and install stabilizers and all that. I think it's just we're way past that now. And the thing is, TiVo have better printers than the Tarantula. About the Mark III, is it solving a lot of problems you have with other printers, i.e. power cut, filament run out, hard to remove prints from bed, etc.? Yes, it is. It definitely solves all those issues. <laughs>
Dave, you are going where I think you are going. They're a good company. I nearly took a roll with them two years ago. Nice. Yeah, because they did start the online part about two years ago. Something like that. Very, very big company. Send me a message, Brian. Let's talk. <laughs> Hey, Ismael. Doing very well, thank you. Specking the parts, no problem. But does anything other than Simplify 3D support different parameters for different parts? Correct? No. Uh, that I'm not entirely sure of. Um, that's why I use Simplify 3D for stuff like that. It just makes life so much easier. Fun fact, there was a tarantula manual on the outside of My Little Monster. <laughs> nice. <laughs> what do I specialize in? Um, I specialize in anything I, I like. <laughs> um, I specialize in um, payments and fraud. I specialize in fake documents, in money laundering. As in, I specialize in anti-money laundering and detecting fake documents. I don't specialize in money laundering, for God's sake. <laughs> Joe, what are your favorite special filaments with glitters or such extras? Pretty wise. So, um, Rigiding Red PTG, one of my all-time favorites. Vertigo Gray, definitely one of my all-time favorites. Um, I like the Polymax Teal from Polymaker. All the Elixir, especially the, um, the, the Nightshade one. Beautiful filament. What else? This is actually very nice. I'm really liking this filament. The um, Neon Yellow Transparent PLA from Matter Hackers. What else? Oh, and the Matte Forge filament. I just remembered I have the Matte Forge filaments. I keep forgetting to print with them. Uh, they're matte filaments. They're absolutely awesome. Is there any difference between heated bed Mark 52 in the kit and the upgrade kit? 24 volts versus 12 volts. That I'm not entirely sure, to be honest. Sorry to bring up the Mark III again, but when can we expect a review from you? If not an exact date, can you tell us at least if it will be before or after the release in November? Um, review, if all goes well and according to Prusa's plans, um, we'll hopefully be able to do a review. I feel I will be able to do a review at around beginning or mid-November. Possibly end of October, but it all depends when they will have review units. Hey, I posted on Patreon asking about the i3 Mega Profiles. Any chance you saw it? To be honest, I haven't logged into um, Patreon for the past three or four days, simply because I had so many things to do. I haven't even checked my email. But I will, because someone else mentioned Patreon, so I will have to go and have a look. Joe is printing money. Oh man, if only. Forgot to ask her, how's the daughter getting on with her printer or has the novelty worn off? So, novelty has definitely not worn off. It absolutely hasn't worn off. Um, not only that, hold on, let me just switch this off because it's, now it's in the way. There. Okay. So let me do this back here. So novelty definitely has worn off. Not only that, she now has on her Christmas list more filaments, even though she has 
over 250 sample bags of filaments. I, I once mentioned that I have a lot of samples which I don't know what to do with. Well, yeah, she's taking them all now. And she also wants another printer. <laughs> because she figured out that she cannot print something else while the printer is printing. So she wants another printer so she can print another thing while one is printing. <laughs> Will you upgrade Mark 2S to a Mark 2.5? Um, no, because I have the multi-material. However, I will be buying the Mark 3. Did you know about the Prusa i3 Mark 3 before it was announced? I, th I think I've known about the Mark 3 for about two months now. Possibly less. That's so good to be talked to, to be able to talk about it. <laughs> How would you suggest my friend to launder money who is drug kingpin and is going to be busted by cops? Uh, <laughs> that's something I cannot suggest. <laughs> but I'm trying to see what's the best way for your friend to get the least amount of jail time. <laughs> Sorry, I just got here. What is the printer on the left? Joe's right. It is the Matter Hacker's Pulse. There is a link in the video description. Does she still use the Dagoma? Um, actually, to be completely honest, she's currently only using the, um, the, the toy box because it is much more kit friendly. They don't actually have to slice anything. She just goes through a library, just prints, and that's it. You make a giveaway with the samples. I could, but it will cost me an arm and a leg. <laughs> will the Mark III have multi-material upgrade option? I'm quite sure they will find a way to add it. I need a bigger house. Hopefully that will be coming in a couple of months if they manage to finish it. We all thought that a second printer would solve the problem. Just ordering number seven. Yeah, Mike, that's exactly what happens. The Mark II multi-material parts can be used on the Mark II. Why can the 2.5 upgrade work with the Mark II that has multi-material? Well, because the extruder is completely different. Um, so that's mainly it. The extruder wouldn't be able to work because it's completely different. You'd still need the multi-material extruder with the Y splitter for it to work. Is there going to be an Ultimaker 3 Plus 4 at New York Maker Faire? That I have no idea. 3 to Noob, so many of us have multi-material on order. Now Mark 3 current won't be compatible with multi-material upgrade, especially if we upgrade to Mark 2.5. What to do, cancel MMU? I'd say cancel the 2.5, to be honest, um, because you're not gaining much. You're gaining very, very little things. Um, maybe the Noctua fan, but honestly speaking, I, it's, I, don't think, I don't think there's any reason to upgrade to 2.5 if you're going to get the multi-material upgrade. How do you feel the aluminum extrusion frame upgrades are going to help? I never owned a Mark II S, so I don't know if the rods, they allow the bed to flex, move, they claim double the speed because of it. So, I've seen the Mark III print at 100 millimeters a second and it was printing like butter. It is very rigid. It is very, very solid. So 100 millimeters a second is not an issue. Does Meta Hackers ship to EU or is there an EU distributor? No, it ships to EU. Or you ordered my Mark III. Now the way begins. <laughs> Virtual the 22 Pro. Does the Mark 2.5 come with the new extruder? Yes, it does. Counterpoint. So your daughter is already infected with the I need more printers bug. Must be heavily contagious. But I'm almost at the same stage. Yeah, she's constantly coming in here. Are you done recording from that? I'll print something. Have you finished recording with that? Can I have it? <laughs> 
Is that printer for me? <laughs> I don't understand why they kept the pesky frame on the Mark III when they did change the bed. The main frame on the Fuchsia still sucks. Um, the thing is they changed the Y-frame and the Y-frame was one of the main issues because the slots with those threaded screws, that was what made it flimsy. Um, and this is literally extruded aluminium inserted, well, attached inside the frame, which makes it extremely solid. Hi Joe, how was your interview in Berlin? Very good, very good, and all is secure. <laughs> Joe, have you ever think of building a 3D printer from scratch your design? Yes, I have, and hopefully it will happen one day. That's all I can say right now. Um, as well, even though the ANET A8 is, I've pretty much changed everything, I'm going to do a few more extras on it, and then it will become my own design. Hey Joe, will you be getting an MK3, uh, Mark III? Yes, I should be getting a review unit. Um, however, I actually have asked Prusa um, to pay for the review units, honestly speaking, um, because in my mind I can already see trolls telling me that I'm getting paid to do a review and that bugs me. Um, I tend to do it with more expensive printers. Um, I did it with the Sigma, I did it with the first um, Prusa. So he said that review units will be sent out as review units by with no charge. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be buying an additional one just to say that I paid for it. The main frame still wobbles. Honestly speaking, I didn't see it wobble at the Prusa factory. It was printing at 100 millimeters a second and it was steady and very quiet. Have you ever thought of building a hypercube? I actually have a Folger Tech FT5 still sitting in a box and I just don't have the time for it. Print something on that printer you got beside you right now. Let me see if I can. I'm hoping that this didn't die. Let's see if it has charged. Give me a moment, please. <laughs> Sorry for all the cool new features on the Mark II. What else would you like to see in the future Prusa printers? So, there is actually something which I suggested to Prusa and for future printers, and I think that should be the way forward. And the filament sensor, the laser they have is awesome, but it would be so cool if a printer um, uh, would be able to calculate the extrusion multiplier as it's printing. So if there is a variation in the diameter of the filament, it would adjust the multiplier on the fly. Also, closed loop systems. Um, it's, it's something where the printer knows where it is. So if there is a layer shift or you hit the printer, it actually moves back into place. I think that is the way forward. You're still calling it the ANIT A8. <laughs> that's, that's, that's what it is to me. Although once I'm done, I'll have all the parts for the init A8 and I can rebuild the init A8. Um, are Prusa doing something with acceleration on the Mark III's? The fact that they're now using, using Noctua, uh, oh, sorry, I'm not Noctua friends, Trinamic stepper drivers, that, that, that is awesome. It reduces the ringing heavily.
Yeah. Take the FT5 off your hands. As, honestly speaking, I would, but shipping to the UK would be exorbitantly expensive. And that's one of the most expensive printers I ever bought. <laughs> and that's why I'm actually sort of not... I'd rather do the reviews first of uh, printers that are sent to me by companies rather than the ones I purchased myself. Should I buy the Prusa i3 Mark III going from a one how i3 plus? Why not? So, let's see. Q. Okay, let's let that printing. Ah, this is not going to print because I'm running out of battery for some reason. Charger is not working. How's that? I think it's charging now. So get a few minutes and I'll put something to print. I didn't see what BB wrote. <laughs> what did he say? <laughs> FT5 is not from these, very rigid. I own three of them. The new B9. <laughs> so, is <one> of the <laughs> so is the Hypercube, but reliable when finished. FT5 just flexes too much. They are not awesome printers, but they are men's and require upgrades. Fair enough. Do you know if you will have full control of the Trinamic drivers? They can run in a whole range of modes, not only power and quiet. Honestly speaking, seeing as it's open source, I'm guessing that you probably will. Life is a lot easier with an SD card. True. To be completely honest, I could have run this off as a D card, um, but as I was still setting it up and calibrating the Z offset and everything, um, that's why it's there. It's been like that since this morning. Is there any advantage of the new Y-axis? Um, the new Y-axis is simply for stability of the printer, to lose the, basically, the threaded screws. So even putting it together is much easier. Zero percent. My charger is not working. MV Engineering, good evening. I'll not go for the Mark III before the hype has settled down. I really don't see anything that is need to have on it yet. Fair enough. <laughs> Why is this not charging? So this doesn't want to charge. Well, the new IXs mean I have to get new sound dampeners. Oh no, trust me, um, it's quiet. It is really, really quiet. Hey, Otavio. Hey, Joe, just dropped in. Will you be doing a Prusa 2.5 upgrade? Um, unfortunately, no, for the simple fact that I have the multi-material upgrade on mine. Um, so I won't be able to use much of it, to be completely honest. Maybe I can buy a Mark II S and then do the 2.5 upgrade on it. <laughs> Mark III has all the features you most likely will ever need. Um, exactly. It pretty much is a, one of those printers where 
every feature that could save you from either wasting filament, ruining a printer. So as Joel said, Joel had an issue once and he did a video about it where a print failed and part of the print got stuck in the, uh, in the hot end fan and then he had this massive heat creep and he ruined a whole hot end because of it. And with the sensors it has, if one of the fans stops for any reason, the print is stopped. If the filament is jammed, it will stop printing. If the electricity goes off, you have power off resume function. And it, it's awesome. It's absolutely awesome. And even if you have a layer shift, you, if you have a 20 hour print and you just let it run because you trust the printer, okay? A lot of people do it. I sometimes do it. Why would, if there's a layer shift in the first five hours, why would you want to let it print for the rest and waste that filament? If it sees that there was a layer shift, it'll just stop the print because it knows it's not going to be a successful print. Can this tablet thing do something like Octoprint? Haven't tried, but read about. Upload to SD card and then start to print from there. Then the tablet can crash all it likes. Honestly speaking, I think it can, but I, I haven't used it much. I'm not that well versed in matter control and the matter control tablet, so I'm not entirely sure yet. I am still playing around with this. Do you think there is an option for Mark II Multimaterial to get the new heat bed? without all the other unneeded stuff, you probably can. Um, I'm quite sure they will. Or features you don't need. Well, it's, it's kind of like ABS on a motorcycle. You don't need it until you do. And the one day you need it and you use it, you'll be very glad that you had it. <laughs> Hello, I'm at work. I just want to say hi on the school weekend. Piotr, Piotr Vietzorek. Dzień dobry. <laughs> so to me, getting the Mark III, but what are your opinions on enclosed printers? I have an enclosed one, which obviously keeps in heat, but, I, but do I need to bear anything in mind with a non-enclosed printer? Um, to be completely honest, nowadays, there are so many modified or re-engineered ABSs and all that kind of stuff that an enclosed printer, the only reason why you would want an enclosed printer is pretty much for air filtration, just for fumes of some materials you might use. Um, previously it was an enclosed printer for ABS, but nowadays there, is, there are many filaments as strong if not stronger than ABS which don't produce toxic, toxic fumes, so an enclosure might not be that well needed unless you want a completely controlled environment. But then again, if you fully enclose a printer, keep in mind that even electronics are in there. So if the heat rises, everything else, all the temperature for everything will rise. What's ABS? Isn't that something the Americans print with? <laughs> Uh, well, just for the sake of it, anti-log break system. <laughs> Thanks for the stream. Have to go. Some family stuff. The community is so much better off with your videos. Thanks again for your honest conversation. Thank you very much, Papa Tech. Thank you so much. I also love how many people dislike this video before it even started. Whoever you are, thank you guys. <laughs> Do 
Yes, uh, they are offering cheaper 2.5 upgrades for those that just got the Mark II S. I think it's about $99. Yes, Deadeye. It has the Trinamics um, drivers with 256 micro steppers. Micro steps, not steppers. Put my center, I have already, I think. Yes, they are. I actually have one to install. Did anyone has about any upgrades? Did anyone has, a, has about any upgrades to Mark S2 of one of those cool features from Mark III? Not sure I understood that. Joe, can you talk more about filaments stronger than an EBS that don't need an enclosure? I want to print with high strength and high heat resistance materials, but can decide on what. Look up um, Polymaker PC Max. Um, it's... Um, um, Maker's Muse, Angus recently used it and he used it in one of his bots which he sent out into an arena to fight with and they held up really well. Um, I actually have a couple of spools which I'll be testing out. Also, filamentive ABS um, do not require an enclosure. Not only that, they require a part cooling fan because it's a re-engineered formula. Same as the Form Futura Reform R Titan X. Uh, I just pre-ordered the Mark III Castle, the multi-material upgrade. What mode do you run the steppers in? Stealth chop? I have no idea. <laughs> I don't tend to tweak much of printers, to be honest. Joel, dude, I miss you guys. I want to be there. I want to, I want to, I want to see you guys. I want to go drink with you guys. And I want to play with the Mark III. <laughs> I miss the Mark III. <laughs> Mike Stickward, uh, get a voucher. Prusa's ABS warps as hell on the Prusa Mark IIs. That's why I'm building an enclosure right now. Um, Prusa, nowadays, as far as I'm aware, is using either Easy ABS or Engen uh, for the orange parts. Joe, did you say you were coming to TCT? Yes, I will be there on the 27th. I will be at the Hawk 3D Proto stand from 10 till 12 and at the E3D stand from 3 till 5, on the 27th. Do you use Octoprint? Actually, I tend to use AstroPrint more, um, because I find it much easier to use, less complicated, much more user-friendly. And to be honest, if I use something like that, I'm only using it to monitor prints and whether I want to stop it or not. I don't need slicing and all that. So no Maker Fair New York 2017, unfortunately not this year. Hopefully next year. So you can print a you can print ABS on an open printer. It's all about settings, yes, but it's also about drafts and if you have a fan or if you have AC in the room or it's another lot of factors. Also, it also depends which ABS it is from which company or how good of an ABS it is. Hey, Joe, interesting upgrades. Good choice. Thank you. 
won't be there personally, but my other two minions will be visiting in the 26th. <laughs> Do you mean the orange parts on the Mark IIs are not Prusa Orange ABS? I thought it was. That's why I bought this filament. Oh no, it's, it is Orange ABS, um, but it's either Easy ABS and also Engine. As a matter of fact, because when I went to the factory, the Prusa factory, um, most of the printers in the farm, which were printing the orange, I noticed that they had the part cooling fan on and instantly thought, like, how? They mentioned that those are engine parts. You said the magic word, fan. Don't use it with ABS. But that's why I said it all depends with which ABS. Filamentive ABS requires a fan. Um, reform our Titan X is an ABS and it requires a fan. So it all depends on the material, on the company or the formula. Joe, did you convince Joel to come to Comic Con in December yet? Oh man, if only I could. There should be word ask. Did anyone ask about upgrades on Mark IIs? For example, magnetic board. Are they on the way in the future or it will be only available on Mark IIs? My apologies, Joe. Uh, no worry, Jutter. Uh, <laughs> um, yes, there is a Mark 2.5 upgrade. So you can have the magnetic board and also the extruder, the new probe, and a few other little things to upgrade the Mark II S. For printer reviews, you should do a surface quality grade so you can score whether a print has ringing, ghosting, wobble, etc. How sharp the corners are? Yes, that is something I will include. Um, I actually don't have them here, but I did the make test. I, I did the make test for the Most Fun Pro, and now I'm doing it also on the CR10, the CR10 Mini, and the TiVo. However, I did the Z resonance tower about this high, about 30 centimeters high. And I want to see how straight it actually is. So all knew about so you all knew about the Mark III coming? Some of us did. And don't print an ABS if you use the print for a showpiece. No need to. Unless you want to throw it at someone. <laughs> now, if I print an ABS, it's usually something I'm going to be used in a particular way. To be honest, I don't really print a lot in ABS. I've printed a lot in Reform R Titan X as parts for my ANET. But other than that... Joe, sadly, it's time to close up shop. Thanks for making my work day so much. Absolutely awesome. Keep that hair looking nice for it. Thank you very much, man. <laughs> Mall to red. Yeah, baby. <laughs> Mark 2.5 upgrade, but still no new Rambo board. The new Rambo board works on a 24 volt power supply, which is why they cannot do a full upgrade because you'd be changing way too many things. Um, if, as far as I, I, I'm, you know what, I'm not entirely sure. I, I was going to say 32-bit, but I'm not entirely sure. So I can't confirm. Stepper motors on the Mark III still the same as the Mark II. Stepper motors are 400 um, steps per millimeter motors. Yes, 400 steps per millimeter motors. Now go print with the Polymaker Max PLA. Yeah, exactly. Polymax Max PLA. See you, Piotr. Do zobaczenia. <laughs> Are you still using the multi-material upgrade much at all or just sticking to one color lately? No, I actually print quite a few things, especially for my daughter and for her friends. 
Um, I tend to not print much with it unless I'm printing many things at once. Big dilemma here. Should I buy Inet A8 for the price of 130 or to go my disco easy? They are 10 minutes away from my home. Don't know what to do. So I've never used the disco easy. Um, but if they're anything like the Dagoma the Neva, they're going to be very easy to use. Um, you'll have customer support behind it. Any issues, you'll, you'll, they'll be sorted. But the Disco Easy does not have a heated build plate. And I think it does not have a screen either. So it only prints in PLA. So it all depends what you want to print. So the Mark II S is now all junk. Oh no, trust me, it's not. It's still a very good printer. It's still a very good printer. Need to call it a night before I doze off at the keyboard. Thanks for the stream and answering all the questions of everyone. Until next time, good night. Have a good night, Frederick. You, Angus, Joel, and more should each print apart for an assembly of some sort of do a live stream together when you meet up and assemble the thing. It's true, actually. That would be an awesome, awesome thing. The Gomaniva tap tap. Yes. <laughs> okay. Anets are bringing out dual extruder eight, A8. I actually have a dual extruder for the Anet A8, but it changes the board completely. Have you printed much with PETG? See this spool holder, this really awesome spool holder? This was printed on the TiVo Tarantula. So, as I was saying, I want to do the same test with many different printers um, with different materials and seeing as I needed to print with PETG if I'm going to print a lot of prints I want something that's useful that I'm going to use and not just you know put away or throw away so I've decided to print this pool holder which honestly speaking is probably one of the best design spool holders I've come across on Thingiverse um, it printed with uh, a Printer Pro PETG on the TiVo Tornado and it printed beautifully. I am printing another one now on the CR10 Mini at the moment. Unfortunately, it has a bit of warping, which I'll talk about in the review. Also, the TiVo Tornado has a really, really, really good um, build surface. What are you going to do with a dual extruder on the A8? You don't have one anymore. Actually, once I finish upgrading the ANET A8, which will then not be an ANET A8 anymore, I will have the parts of the ANET so I can reassemble the ANET A8. <laughs> so, can you show the link or part number of the... Oh, let me check. Hold on. Let me find it. So. Let me find it, let me find it. There it is. There. If you need a spool holder, that is probably one of the best ones you will find. It's by far one of the best ones. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. So it is now TiVo Tornado or CR10. <laughs> um, I don't know. <laughs> Um, I've 
to a certain extent, let me pick something up. So this was the CR10 Mini. This was the Tornado. Hold on. Hold on. Slower print speeds. Tornado, uh, the CR10 performs better at higher print speeds. The, um, the Tornado actually performs better at higher sprint print speeds. Also keep in mind that the Tornado has like a Titan, clone Titan extruder, which comes in very handy. Also, when I said that I printed the Z resonance test, the tall thin one, just to see how it is, both the CR10 and the CR10 Mini had slight layer movement uh, going upwards. It wasn't a layer shift. It was literally just like a slight bend going upwards, whereas the Tornado was perfectly fine. Just sent you a picture via Twitter. crashed crashed what crashed Joe crashed Joe I didn't crash what happened everything is fine overpriced than a cubic a through mega <laughs> funny Someone um, posted the link to the um, Prusa i3 Mark III, and someone commented overpriced Anacubic i3 Mega. Can you talk more about the TiVo Tornado? I was looking to get it, uh, but get CR10 in the end. Um, TiVo Tornado, so. It requires a bit more playing around on assembly um, from the CR10. Keep in mind that the CR10 that are being issued out now are the second version, so they have the two lead screws and also the uh, run out filament sensor. So it's slightly upgraded uh, than it was before. However, the one that I have is the same build volume as the TiVo Tornado. TiVo Tornado has a few things which I prefer. So it has a 24 volt power supply. Um, to give you an idea, in order to print PETG, which needs, um, sorry, in order to print in TPU, which requires a heat bed of 70 degrees, it took about 40 minutes for the CR10 to reach that temperature. Whether the, was the TiVo, uh, TiVo Tornado got there in about, I think it was six to seven minutes. So you already have that. Apart from that, the bed of the TiVo Tornado is completely insulated. The MOSFET they use is industrial grade. It's much more better quality than the CR10. Um, it uses also the Titan Aero extruder. So, but other than that, everything is pretty much identical. Apart from the run out filament sensor and the dual lead screws. Uh, the bed of the tornado. It comes with this like sticker, like a build tap, build tack type stickers, which you get an extra one just in case because it's an odd shaped one. Um, really good. Um, probably one of the best Biltec type surfaces I've seen. Um, only Biltec type surface that I've seen as good as this is the pale poly sheet. Prints stick really well. The PETG large surface had no warping whatsoever. Whereas the CR10 on just on a glass bed, I've tried with glue, I've tried with magic glue. Once you go over a certain edge, it starts slightly warping a bit, which is a shame. Hello, Joe, what is the printer beside you? Prusha i3 Mark III? No, this is the Matter Hacker's Pulse. There is a link in the video description. Uh, 
I cancelled my order of the Prusa i3 MKS. MKS Mark 2S or Mark 3? Because the Mark 3, as far as I know, only uses four zip ties, and that is to hold the rods in place. But everything else. All right, Chris, have a, see you later, man. Secure to ground, 220 volt bed, this is our relay, correct. Somehow I feel like dumping my interest for 3D printing after the Mark III release, after I got Mark II as three weeks ago. Quality-wise, they're not going to be much different. So it's more the extra perks that are going to change. Joe, print something on that printer. I will, but I'm going to bed soon because it's midnight. It's five past midnight. I need to sleep because I need to record tomorrow because I'll be off to TCD, TCT in a couple of days. And I need to sort out because I've only uploaded one video this week because it's been a nightmare and busy. And as you can see, I'm printing, I'm preparing more episodes. I have the, the Gomaniva review coming up. I have the GTEC Giant Arm D200 review coming up. A video about uh, Filamentum Vertigo Galaxy coming up. A video about um, Azure Film Filaments coming up. So many things. So many things. I absolutely hate Prusa spool holder. It's the reason why Prusa isn't working right now. The spool fell halfway through a print right on top of the limit switch, breaking the switch. Ouch. Do you find the multi-material upgrade limiting in regards to not being able to blend colors for a full palette as opposed to ORD or other full? Um, not limiting, to be honest, um, because I more than multi-color, I think it's more functional as a multi-material printer. Multi-color is fun, but the best use for it is for multi-material. Is there going to be a 3D new version of the Mark III? Maybe I'll do one with red parts. Is this 32 bit? What Rambo board? How fast can it print? I just got this yesterday, so I'm still testing it out for review. But it's not a Rambo, it runs on a Ramps 1.4 board. Lasse, uh, Lasse. Um, I'm in EU as well, man. I'm in Malta. Brian, off to bed. Thanks again. Always a pleasure. We'll drop a direct mail for a chat. All the best. Enjoy TCG. Thanks, man. Have a good night. Joe, I ruined my PEI sheet recently by using self-made ABS juice. The print stick far too well to the bed. Do you recommend using ABS juice? Mejigu doesn't work well enough for me with ABS. So, um, I've never used ABS juice. Um, I mainly use Mejigu, which kind of works well, especially with the PEI. Um, I personally would suggest this, if you have issues with prints sticking, um, try printing with the brim. It usually helps. The button has been pushed. <laughs> oh, Mike, the button has been pushed. You took the plunge for a Mark III, hadn't you? Haven't you? Did you? Didn't you? Oh, God, it's getting late. <laughs> Psycast. Hey Joe, great videos and very informative. Appreciate your personal insights. Waiting on my TiVo Little Monster and your review helped me make my decision. I appreciate that, man. Awesome. So yes, ladies and gentlemen, it is now 10 past 8, um, 10 past midnight. Um, and I, I need to get to bed. It's starting to get a bit late. 
Um, I need to wake up early in the morning. I have things to do. I have things to finish. I have many more of these to do on some printers. Um, I will start the new review format possibly in a couple of weeks, starting off with the CR10s, um, because for now I have a lot of prints already done on the GTEC, on the, uh, the Goma Neva. So I will be using, like for example, these, all of these, except this. And this, these were all printed on the GTEC, produces beautiful quality prints. Um, so going through all that again will be a bit of an issue, but I just need to print with a couple more materials on it. But other than that, yes. And then we start off with this and I have the Tronc CX3S and the Tronc CX3, which I really don't like. I'm going to be honest. It's not that I mind them as printers, but they're possibly the worst kit you can buy. I'm being completely honest. They are the most, the two most frustrating printers I've ever had the displeasure of assembling. Um, incomplete instructions, lots and lots of missing parts, lots of missing screws. Um, the, the engineering complexity of assembly just doesn't make sense because you cannot adjust and, oh my God. So I'm taking my time with their reviews because honestly speaking, they just don't inspire me. <laughs> they really don't. No, Stal, wife is not calling, wife is asleep. <laughs> she knows this is my job, so. Thank you very much, um, Don. Everyone is more than welcome. Thank you very much. Let me share with I wish you sweet dreams. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Three D print creator, unfortunately, yes, as I'm about to go to sleep. <laughs> it's been a long day. Yes, a big shout out to Ryan, who's been an absolute boss tonight, moderating the chat. Please check out his Twitter account um, and also his YouTube channel. Also, thanks to Mike, um, NLTMW, which means never let the machines win, apparently. <laughs> and also Chris from Practical Printing, who is just here right now. Um, check out his channel as well. So yes, so thank you very guys. Thank you very much, guys, for dropping by. I hope you enjoy this Q and A session. Um, I hope I gave you enough information on the Mark III. Um, hopefully, we'll have one here soon, and I will be able to review with you guys. Yes, we'll definitely do a live build of that, um, obviously. Um, and yeah, that's it for me. So. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, share, subscribe, ring the bell so you get notifications when I'm online or when I start doing live streams or when I schedule a live stream. Um, an awesome thank you to my Patreon supporters. You guys are absolutely awesome. And if you want to help out the channel in any way, um, there are some affiliate links in the bottom of the video description. It doesn't cost you anything extra. Actually, on some of them, there are discount codes. Um, but uh, there will be some kickbacks for the channel, which go a very, very long way, and I would highly appreciate it, but obviously you don't have to. So, yeah. Thank you very much for watching. Have a good night, and as always, happy making, guys. <laughs>